The death and misery which greeted the soldiers on Normandy soon began to pay off in victories. The U.S. Army was now in a race to liberate the City of Light. The liberation of Paris restored the French Republic and exiled the Vichy government. It was August 1944. The Nazis had been in France since June 1940. Here is the news read by Richard Wessel. Paris has been liberated. A communique just received from General Koenig announces that it has been liberated by French forces of the interior. At summer's end, the 314th Infantry battled through Charm and forded the Moselle River. Said Lubitsch, while the 79th was near Charm, there were a couple more entrenched strong points in the street before our objective, which was a corner building. But the Germans and their women didn't want to die. The day was much too beautiful, and no one wanted to see the sun for the last time. But many of our boys never did see the sun again. The city was bombed out, destroyed, yet there were a few holdouts. The Americans fought throughout the streets until the last holdouts finally surrendered. These Nazis were now the enslaved, hands raised, at peace. An idea of domination left in ruins along with the lives of their victims. A woman waves a hanky to surrender. She never wanted to fight and now she had to find a way to survive. Total chaos was brought to Europe by the Nazis, shattered lives, living in shambled buildings, the result of war. Far too little laughter was heard over the goose step cadence of the militaristic Nazi regime. A child throwing snowballs in Nazi Germany would have been unheard of at this time last year. No time for play for the Hitler Youth. Now the militarism was just a bad memory. Replaced by the liberating soldier, the GI, stocked with chocolate and chewing gum, providing joy and laughter. Christmas was near, and the thought of going home was on everyone's mind. The Nazis, however, had other thoughts. A last offensive, a lasting defeat wasted lives after the war had already been lost. P.W. Kreutzwald, a POW camp, a Tower of Babel, a cloth of many threads. This was the Nazi slave labor system designed by Hitler. The end of the war is nearing, though there is no certainty of an outcome, at least for now. However, there will be no more suffering at the hands of the Nazis SS officers for these men. Poles, Russians, Jews, Mongolians, Eastern European Slavs. For them, the holidays came early. With the piercing of the Siegfried Lion defenses north of Aachen, accomplished by the American First Army, a new attack has been started further south, this time by General Patton's Third Army. The Third Army offensive began at dawn this morning on the 20-mile front between the French fortress cities of Metz and Nancy, where the Germans hold a shallow salient, but a well-defended one. By March, Lubitsch and the 89th Division were on the move toward Koblenz. Resistance was high as Koblenz was the last defense into Germany. Sniper action and scattered resistance continued. Soldiers fought hand-to-hand -hand battles through town, taking the city building by building. They didn't know it, but they were less than two months away from victory. On April 23, 1945, Lubitsch was one of the soldiers who encountered POWs on their way to the Auschwitz death camp. It seemed the Nazis were incapable of killing as many as they would have liked at the Flossenburg concentration camp. Upon reaching the camp, the soldiers found the charred remains of the victims piled into a funeral pyre, and others buried in shallow graves. These men were left for dead. The Nazis did not want to waste a bullet on them, and they were too weak to walk. The world suffered a collective heartache. American soldiers liberated most of the concentration camps. Their films, a witness to our collective sorrow, our guilt, eternal. It's over now, the war. A bitter end for so many. Sacrifice and sadness. Sons left on the beaches and battlefields, at rest, in a foreign land. Their presence missed daily back home. Men and women massacred in prison camps and cremated in concentration camps. It was a world without reason. As a Signal Corps photographer, Lubitsch captured the sullen reality of POW and death camps. His film of the Holocaust was used as evidence against the Nazis during the Nuremberg trials, and his footage remains a testament to what unbridled hegemony can create in man. 
Hitler was sworn in as Chancellor of Germany in January 1933. By March, the Dachau concentration camp opened. The estimated total death count for Nazi victims exceeded 10 million. In less than 10 years, nearly half of Europe's Jewish population disappeared. But mostly, Lubitsch recorded soldiers as they were, men at war, willing to die, fighting to stay alive, and working to end the Nazi regime. We view and know the war by the images preserved by the Signal Corps photographers, like Lubitsch. Their films and images represent our memories and of things we should never forget. After the war, Lubitsch moved to Delaware, where he opened the Lubitsch and Bungars photography studio with John FX Jack Bungars, another World War II Signal Corps photographer. In 1964, Lubitsch exhibited his work at the Delaware Art Center, titled D-Day Plus Two Decades. He also exhibited his work in a variety of museums from New York to Israel. A Jewish man exposing on film the atrocities of the Third Reich. Haunting images of broken men and women. This war was fought for the children of Europe, and the American soldiers died for their future. Aaron Sipen Lubitsch died October 9, 1989. An immigrant, a liberating hero, an American soldier. His life started in Poland, where he survived the pogroms by moving to Canada for a better life, and into New York City for a better opportunity. His destiny was to serve as one of the men who filmed the invasion of the Battle of the Western Front. Sent back to Europe, Cameron Hand, a cinematographer to the greatest generation. His films, a witness to history. Village by village and town by town, laughter returned to the children of Europe. These children knew only of the horrors of war or the harsh reality of life under the control of the Nazis. And now, there before them stands an American soldier, a liberator, with Cameron Hand, filming their smiles, ensuring their future, allowing them to simply be children once again. No longer part of the Hitler Youth, no longer a future warrior, now just a child of freedom.